Hello Summoners and welcome back to another Pro Guides video. My name is Nathan Ng and today we'll be talking about the 5 sleeper OP picks and builds that you should be abusing for some free LP. You definitely know the popular OP ones since they're all over social media, including our very own YouTube channel. But in this video, we'll be looking at some of the lesser known picks and builds today. We'll be starting things off with AP Zeri. This build isn't entirely a secret at this point. Most of us have probably already seen it once or twice, but almost every time I've seen somebody try it, they end up flopping really badly. There's a reason Ludus has such a low win rate compared to the standard marksman mythics on Zeri. People have no idea how to play this. They just see it, try to replicate it, and end up inting. You have to totally play Zeri differently when you build your AP. As AD Zeri, your entire existence hinges on your ultimate. Without it, you have no kiting power and your DPS is much lower than when it's active. So it requires you to fight only when it's up, and once you use it, you really need to commit to the fight to keep stacking it. As AP Zeri, that's basically the opposite of what you want to do. She does some damage with her ultimate up, but your main goal is to simply poke with her W. It may sound weird to play Zeri in a way that reduces her to basically just having one spell, but trust me, it really packs an insane punch once you get some items. It's not an exaggeration to say that you can two-shot any squishy champion once you have three or four items. Aside from spamming Ws, the other selling point of this build is a huge burst her ultimate does, so when a fight does break out, you do offer a pretty good AoE nuke. Now this isn't one of those sleeper builds that you might call the right way to play Zeri. In fact, I'd actually say that 80 Zeri is probably a lot more consistent to hard carry, but it's not always so clear cut. Remember, we're talking about how 80 Zeri has to really fight around having her ultimate up, and once you use it, you need to commit to the fight and keep the stacks up. That means you're relying on having at least a decent team comp to be able to fight 5v5s. But with AP Zeri, there's just no such conditions. You're always free to spam her W poke, and then when the enemy tries to seize your tower, you can constantly one-shot the waves. On top of that, it's utter hell to try and take Dragon or Baron against AP Zeri. You can just sit back and spam Ws from different angles, with the potential to pick off any of the enemy carries that aren't able to dodge the beam. Now let's look at the actual build that you'll need for this. For runes, run first strike, magical footwear, futures market, approach velocity, manifold band, and transcendence, with the tertiary runes being attack speed, depth to force, and health. For your item, start with a coal, pick up its here on the early recall, and then start working towards mana mute. After that, grab sorcerer's shoes and loot in Stampist. You'll pretty much always want to go glass cannon, grabbing shadow flame, rabbit on death cap, and void staff as your last three items. Part of what makes Sleeper OP picks so successful is the fact that nobody really plays them. Objectively speaking, they may not be better than or even as good as the most popular picks, but when your opponents don't really know how to play against them, you get that extra edge in the fight. But that alone isn't enough to win all of your solo queue games. You also need to have the skills to get those early leads, and the know-how to use those leads to win your games. And that's exactly what we try to teach you over at ProGuides.com. Our top tier coaches on ProGuides.com can help you figure out exactly what you need to work on. They're available 24-7, so it's never really a bad time to come try one out. I promise, there's at least one that specializes in exactly what you're looking for. These guys have spent years climbing the solo queue ladder, so why would you want to steal all their solo queue tips and tricks? You can find the link to our website down in the description box below. Now let's get back on topic, shall we? The next pick that we have is 80 Nico Top. This used to be a super popular pick when Nico first came out, but over time, it fell off pretty hard. Most people that play Nico just build her in some form of AP, no matter what world they're in. But with the durability patch, DPS builds as a whole became a lot stronger. Don't get me wrong, AP Nico is still really good and definitely fills a certain niche, but that's more for mid lane and bot lane. As a top laner, you need the extra DPS for the more extended fights that you'll be having against all the beefy champions that get played up there. There are plenty of ranged champions that are super strong 1v1 laners in the top lane, but a lot of them come with a lot of risk. They're susceptible to ganks, and most of them end up being really easy for the other top laners to all in after level 6. But with Nico, you have all those risks covered. Her W and E make her incredibly safe, able to disengage bad fights and escape from ganks that would otherwise be guaranteed deaths from most other champions. And with this AD build, you'll scale super hard as a side laner, able to very easily keep up bullying even against OP duelists like Fiora when you have a lead. Let's take a look at the setup that you want for this. For your runes, run press the attack, presses of mind, alacrity, coup de grace or cut down, celerity, and gathering storm. Well, the stat runes being attack speed, adaptive force, and health. For your items, start with the Doran's Blade, rush Berserker Screeves, and then go for Blade of the Rune King and Kraken Slayer. Next, grab your Ginsu's Rage Blade and then two situational items. Good options are Rune and Hurricane, Hole Breaker, Wit's End, and Titanic Hydra. The next pick that we have for you is Aatrox Mid. He does so much better in this lane than he does in the top lane. Aatrox's bursty damage profile just doesn't work too well against most of the other champions that we see in the top lane right now. Other bruisers, juggernauts, and even tanks are all able to pretty much eat his combo and just beat him down over time while he's on cooldown. 
but the champions that you run into the mid lane are a lot squishier, so when you land your combo, you'll actually be able to win the trades. Plus, as we'll go over in just a few seconds, the build that you'll go for in the mid lane is completely focused on bursting down the squishies that you'll be hitting, so your snowball potential is going to be through the roof here. Another plus of playing Aatrox mid is the length of the lane itself. In top lane, if you dash in for a trade and the jungler is there, you're basically guaranteed to die. The shorter mid lane is a lot more forgiving, so even if you overextend just by a bit, it's not just a one-way ticket back to the fountain. Now for the build you'll want here. For your runes, run Electrocute, Sudden Impact, Eyeball Collection, Treasure Hunter, Second Wind, and Flinching or Revitalize, and with the stat runes being Double Adaptive Force and Health. For your items, if you're against a very poke-heavy champion, go for Doran's Shield. If not, just go Doran's Blade and then build towards Eclipse. Buy either Zill Caps or Merc Trets and then grab Black Cleaver or Yubu's Ghost Blade and Sorella's Grudge. Next, grab Death's Dance and then finish things off with a situational item like Maw, Force of Nature, or Guardian Angel. Every now and then we see certain mages get played in the top lane. Usually, it's just a popular mid laner that starts getting picked tops due to them just being able to safely scale here. We've seen it with Victor, Anivia, and even Malzahar in recent times. But Aurelian Soul is a champion that you barely see in his main role as a mid laner. So seeing him in the top lane is something that almost nobody will ever really see. But we think there may be a lot of wasted potential here. His kit is actually perfect for dealing with the guys that you see in this lane. His stars give consistent pushing power and DPS, and you're able to kite back and forth from a safe distance while doing so. His Q serves as a way to disengage trades, with his ult helping to be an extra failsafe later on. Also, his itemization is really good for dealing with top laners. Leandrius helps cut through their bigger health pools, while Realize gives you even more kiting power later on. Let's take a look at the full build that you'll want for this. For your runes, run Conqueror, Presence of Mind, Tenacity, Coup de Grasse, Conditioning, and Overgrowth or Inflinching, with the stat runes being Double Adaptive Force and Health. For your items, start with the Doran's Ring and then build into Leandris, Sorcerer's Shoes, and Rallies. After that, the standard item route would be to go for Shadow Flame, Rabadons, and Void Staff, but you can itemize a little bit more defensively if you need to. Finding all these sleeper off meta picks isn't easy. We've searched around a lot, but a lot of the picks that we find aren't the ones that we find on purpose. It's just something that we happen across in a game or something that we hear about through the grapevine. That brings us to today's question of the day. What are some picks that you guys think are heavily slept on? Whether it's something that you play yourself or just something that you've seen others abusing, you want to hear all about it. So let us know in the comments down below. Now without further ado, let's get to our last pick. Finishing off our list, we have the return of Heimerdinger support. We used to talk about how strong this was, but since Heimer fell off as a whole, it became pretty much an entirely unviable way to play him. But after the pretty big buff that he just got, he's back to being a super strong pick. And don't go thinking that this is just some cheesy pick that sounds noobs. In Diamond Plus Korean solo queue, 40% of all Heimerdinger games have been played as support and his win rate is pushing 60%. Even with his relatively small sample size, doing that good on that super competitive ladder has to prove something. So let's take a look at what you want to build. For your runes, run Comet, Mana Flow, Transcendence, Scorch, Presence of Mind, and Coup de Grasse. The set runes being Double Adaptive Force and Health. For your items, start with the Spell Thief's Edge, Rush Sorcerer's Shoes, and then build into Leandris and Zhonya's. If you want to be a damage threat, grab Void Staff next. If not, utility from something like Rallies or Morello Namicon works. If you want a greedier build, you can grab Rabidons or just another big AP item last, but you should sit on the ward zone until you can afford it. That item gives a lot of value. We choose to go with this build along with Max and Q because it's an easy way to consistently bully lane, but it's not the end all be all. If you're really confident in landing your spells consistently, then you can run for a strike and max W for a lot more poke and extra income. That wraps things up for our sleeper builds that you don't want to miss out on for patch 12.12. .12. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and if you did, make sure you sub so you never miss out on our meta guides, and you're always in the loop on what the best picks are. Remember to let us know some more off-meta and sleeper picks that you think that we should look at. And one last thing, don't forget to check out our Discord in the description box below, where you can discuss it further, or just hang out and be part of the community. I can't wait to see you guys back in the next video, but until then, stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.